So I am a postgraduate student here at LSE studying political science, global politics. Um, and as a student of global politics, I find the most important thing to do with this education is to engage it on campus and throughout the rest of our careers. And that's exactly what we were doing in this building. LSE students were the first to produce a report on exact ways that the university is complicit in the genocide of Palestinians and an exact strategy for how to dismantle those operations. This meant that the university had little work to do. They just had to implement strategies that were given to them by students that were incredibly informed on this matter. In the face of this incredible development of academic and political work, LSE, instead of deciding to set precedent by divesting and meeting our other demands of complicity, they decided to set their legacy in history as the first university in the UK to evict pro-Palestinian student protesters. From the beginning of this, LSE has said that they will not, they are not able to engage with our demands because it would be taking a political stance. Yet they were willing to take their own students to court, repressing their right to free speech and protest, which is inherently a political stance, especially when considering we are here protesting against genocide. Yeah, so uh, for a couple of weeks, actually, we were receiving threats of a potential legal route uh, that LSE wanted to seek out. Um, it was initially very intimidating. It was very scary to have the university, you know, try to leverage lo the law against us as students. Yeah, it was on Sunday that LSE decided to go ahead with the court order um, and we received notification that we had to leave the building within 24 hours. Um, we received the court order, uh, an interim possession order, on Sunday uh, in the middle of our Eid celebrations here. Um, so one of the really like frightening consequences of this order isn't just that we had to leave the building by 4 p.m. yesterday. It actually means now that if any members of the encampment returned here to the ground floor of the Marshall Bloom building, um, we would be liable for an offense um, and we, we cannot return. LSE will say we can enter for studying purposes, um, for educational purposes, uh, but our argument is protest is also educational. As students, we can also protest. So it's a bit sort of... It kind of like identifies some of the holes in their argument against us. Uh, and we decided to launch the encampment as part of the global student movement against institutional academic complicity and silence in the, on the genocide in Gaza and the, specifically against the investments that this university has, 89 million pounds worth of uh, investments into the arms trade, fossil fuel production, and most egregiously the crimes against the Palestinian people. We planned a rally outside the Marshall Building here in order to engage our community and show LSE the amount of community support that we have. Students inside the encampment opened the windows in order to allow community members to help us move out all of our things. We had a lot of, a lot of things that needed to be moved out, all of the tents and everything like that. Um, students, staff, and general public from the crowd entered the windows, and that led to immediate violence from security, which was unnecessary and indiscriminate. Um, I personally witnessed some pretty egregious actions, including throttling, grabbing, throwing students to the ground, I, people were groped, and it was unnecessary, and it clearly showed that LSE did not care about the health and safety of their students, which is the narrative that they have used throughout this entire process. There were two hearings. The first hearing, we couldn't even get legal representation in time, um, and we had to go alone to defend ourselves. Um, in the run-up to that, the university had told us that if we seek a court sort of option if we follow the route of court that they would end negotiations with us um, so in effect they were telling us that if we choose to defend ourselves negotiations may stall um, which is really obviously concerning. LSE intended to crush the resolve of our movement by ending our physical presence here however that does not mean that our movement has ended the liberated zone is not an element of physical space it is a movement within our minds and our hearts, and we will continue to organize and we will continue to act until the university divests.